how to connect PostgreSQL uh, to a node program. Um, so uh, we, basically today we are going to use a library called uh, node postgres uh, it's a pretty good library um, i use it a lot so we're gonna the way we're gonna start is in our terminal uh, we're gonna run npm install pg so this would install this module in this project and what's installed so with uh, pg post node postgres there are two ways to connect to database uh, one is using queries and one is using pools so the basically difference is in queries, whenever you make a query, there will be a new connection established with the Postgres SQL, uh, with the database. So there would be an actual overhead of like a handshaking and stuff like that. So uh, when you're working on a big project, it's not really the way to go. So the better way is using pooling. So pooling is you just create one connection pool and then you actually uh, create clients from it and you know, use the client from there. So Postgres PGSQL exports a class called pool. We instantiate it and let's see the example of async await. So in async await, you just create a pool.connect, you get a client, you can run queries on the client and you release the clients when it's done. Uh, there's also a function called pool. So on the pool, there's a function called end and um, you call that method whenever you are done with pooling. So uh, a lot of times in projects where server is always running, we don't do that but we would actually do here to see that the uh, function doesn't hang. So, uh, I'm sorry for that. Let me just put myself on do not disturb. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so to get started, um, we would actually uh, import. So let's just do constant uh, pool equals uh, require pg so this would actually import a pg in a pool class in our uh, function and now we can do a uh, constant pool equals new uh, pool and uh, so currently you would see i'm not sending any config uh, which is okay to get started by default it would use uh, the default config where our default port would be uh, 5432 and the default database would be the one by the computer name or if you have set it to something different so one of the best ways to do that is uh, run the uh, command line so command line is psql um, and help so it's with the two dashes help so at the bottom you would actually see uh, uh, the default uh, you know the default configuration so you can always change this and um, in case you don't have PSQL installed in you and uh, the PSQL command not installed in your computer but you used uh, the way method I told in the previous video where we installed a Postgres using Postgres app. So you can actually go to uh, Postgres uh, at PSQL command. So there is a direct link here. Documentation. Uh, so oh, not this one so it's the apps documentation yeah so using the command line with this uh, postgres app so you just need to come uh, run these two commands in your terminal and you'll get this uh, um, in your command line psql so anyways, let's get started. So once we have this, uh, let's just uh, create a client. So we can just say constant client equals uh, pool dot uh, connect. Uh, yeah, uh, let me just close and open this file. For some reason, I'm not getting suggestions. Hmm, interesting. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, not getting suggestions at all. So anyways, that's okay. Uh, let's just come here and uh, uh, let's keep our stuff in try catch uh, yeah and let's also declare finally and in finally we would actually release the client uh, client dot release and later we would actually do here pool dot end so let's end the pool here once the client is released pool dot end okay so we have everything ready uh, let's just 
run one query the first would be crud so create query let's create a table um, so on the bottom right you would see the, here's my psql if i see all the definitions sorry about the capital uh, there are no relations right now so let's create a relation first so what we can do is we can actually uh, await client dot query and let's run uh, create table person and let's just give id uh, serial so that it auto increments and name as uh, backer 25 yeah that looks good uh, let's just save it and run the query so load oh there's an error uh, client dot release is not a function uh, okay we should have we should await it uh, and now it looks good uh, cool so after running the error syntax error at the end of input uh, what's the error yeah we forgot to close the brackets mm -hmm. live coding sorry guys so now it's executed everything's done so if I come here I can actually see the relation here so I can see the person thing uh, person relation existing here and we can start uh, working on it so this was a create query uh, let's also insert something in here so let's just uh, uh, you know what instead of deleting the queries I'll just uh, keep them here constant queries equals this one the first would be create create table so this is our create table table query and the second would be our uh, insert data and for this we'll run insert into person insert into table name and the column we are inserting so let's select name and uh, values would be let's say uh, test name yeah that looks good so let's just do that here and uh, uh, run that particular query so queries uh, you know what guys I'll just reload the window of uh, uh, my uh, VS code with auto suggestion it doesn't really feel like you know coding <laughs> so uh, we have got IntelliSense open now so if I run queries dot uh, insert data and save it so now if I run this query so it's run it's uh, didn't give uh, any uh, errors console uh, select star from person so we can see the person is inserted so now if we run the query again there would be another person here and so on and so forth we can keep going okay now the third query we can run here is actually selecting the data so select uh, or this would actually call read right so read uh, data uh, let's say uh, select select a star from person where uh, let's say ID is equal to one uh, I guess I should have changed the name in that case but that's okay so select star from uh, this one and let's uh, read the data uh, so in the read data we would actually get response and the way response looks like is response has got uh, if it's a single row uh, it's an object so we get an object and in object we have an option called rows so let's do that here and run the query so you can actually see the first name got uh, updated we can see the value so so far we have got so good we have covered three aspects of like uh, uh, how to actually get connected and how to execute the queries uh, the next important thing which I wanted to show you was uh, the prepared statements or um, you know uh, parameterized statements yeah ah, I said it correct <laughs> so let's just see if it's here somewhere uh, uh, it's it's somewhere in their documentation and so uh, the big question would be why would we need that why would somebody need that so 
let's just take example of a select star from person where id equals one so uh, let's imagine we have a uh, yeah, we have an actual H, uh, html app on the user browser and we ask them to put uh, enter their you know uh, uh, id and we pull in the data from database and show it to them so and that's using that id we read the data from database just keep it that way so what we would do is we would do actually something like uh, id equals one and uh, what we can do here is let's change these to this okay uh, we can do plus id so now actually it would read the id and give us the data so if i run it again uh, we got it uh, yeah it's working so if i change it to two uh, we would actually see the data with id2 yeah so it's running it's working uh, now uh, imagine we got a malicious user and they actually want to hack your database so they can actually give in a data a data a think in a different way so imagine this way if this id was not there uh, let's just leave this id for now okay let's just imagine this id was not there and if you really wanted to make this like malicious how you can do that so we would actually do one so this would add the uh, you know uh, complete the query uh, add a semicolon and once this semicolon is added let's do plus uh, semicolon so this query ends now and now we can do uh, drop table person so this would actually drop this particular uh, table sorry this would actually complete the query and drop the table for uh, database now if a malicious user comes along they can give an uh, input which looks something like this so something like this and id so imagine user gives in this id okay and uh, even if it's a string come everything comes as a string and stuff like that okay so now if we execute the query it says undefined uh, but if we go here and look at our relations there are no relations anymore the triple actually dropped so this is the kind of danger we have uh, and this is somewhat related to SQL injection you can actually uh, inject a, a part of a SQL query which actually gets executed on the server and the database is updated based on it so to you know to get rid of such functionalities we use parameterized or uh, mm, prepared statements <laughs> so the way prepared statements work is uh, what we actually do is uh, in case of id we won't give the id as a string we would just give a placeholder here okay and in id if we give it a let's say array one so one is the value and the way we are gonna execute this uh, let's create the database first uh, let's run the create table query and execute it so it got executed let's see if it got created yeah uh, let's insert data uh, let's run the query again so now if we do select star from person we can see the data is inserted and if we read the data here uh, and so the first uh, argument to query would be the actual you know the actual query and the second argument would be sorry um, let's just uh, pull it here somewhere I remember it being somewhere in welcome connecting PG, PGQL. Okay. Um,
uh, yeah, parameterized queries. So we could actually see when we query, uh, yeah, it's here. The first argument would be the actual query and the second argument will the values array. So we gave query dot read data and the second argument would be the actual ID. So what it would do, it will read an array and the first value would be replaced with dollar uh, one. So now if we run the query, uh, sorry, sorry about that. If we run the query, you actually see the data. And uh, let's try to hack it now. Uh, so if suppose a malicious user come and they give ID something like uh, one and followed by uh, uh, the exact same thing which was drop table person so uh, this won't actually treat that as separate uh, you know a separate query but it would actually do this so in instead of integer it, it got this and uh, it would actually fail it so this is how we can avoid uh, you know uh, SQL injections and this is how we use parameterized queries so yeah uh, I think I've covered everything uh, how to actually uh, deal with uh, uh, what do you call it uh, Postgres and connect it with node um, if you have any questions feel free to ask them in comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can thank you see you